Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Mr. Bill Efridge. Cool. So many people in this room. As many of you will remember, I stood for leader in the first leadership election. That's gone now, that's done, but there were so many people in this room who supported and helped me and got me through that time. And there was such a basis of support of people here who were at least kind to me. So I want to say thank you all so much for that. <laughs> Look, that first leadership election campaign is something that after today, I hope, and certainly after the election we're running through now, can be consigned to being something that's a very, very bad memory in our history. It was badly organised, badly run. The whole thing descended into the kind of mess that actually the Labour Party might have recognised. <laughs> and it was appalling. That's why I was so pleased, because I was all geared up and ready to go again. Believe me, folks, I'm the kind of guy who'll keep on campaigning <coughs> even if I'm the only one voting for me. <coughs> I was still ready to go, but then I had a conversation with another candidate who was prepared to stand. Now, I'm not going to talk on behalf of the other candidate. All I'll say is, I think sometimes a bald head is a solar <laughs> panel for a turbocharged leader. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe. I don't know if the rest of you have suffered from the same thing as me, but, but of late, I've worried about my hearing. I've, I've had this, this buzzing sound in my ear. I keep on hearing it. It's, it's getting louder and louder. I keep hearing this sound in my ear everywhere I, everywhere I go. And I've started to identify words coming through in it. It's... It wasn't fair. Oh. Oh. We should have another referendum. Oh. What about the 48%? And then I hear it with an American accent now. They said, oh, it's divisive. The people are voting. Look, this whining, this awful moaning that's going on, you know what that is? That's people who aren't used to being beaten. Because they're not used to the people speaking out and saying, we've had enough of you. And just now, we're in a golden time. The people are actually awake, speaking out and saying, oh no, no more of this stuff. We're stopping you. It's fantastic. It's a wonderful time to be involved in politics. Whatever we do, whether we be putting out leaflets, whether we be fortunate enough to stand here, making silly jokes in front of a large crowd, Whatever we do, now is a wonderful time. And it's getting better and better because the scent of democratic rebellion and revolution is there. Both sides of the channel. Both sides of the pond, as the Americans put it. In Europe, country after country is getting ready to follow suit. I go out there regularly and believe me, folks, we are not alone. We are not alone. It's the first time in my life I've had Frenchmen come up and hug me after we won the referendum. <laughs> <laughs> but they're next. They're next. They are ready. So are the Dutch. So are the Swedes. And the more it goes on, the more wins we have, the more people actually start to believe we can speak up. And what's more, what's more, we're right. So many years of being told Naughty, naughty, naughty. Don't say the things you think. It's all very wrong. You're being racist, you're being divisive, you're being a bigot, you're being old-fashioned, you're reaching back in time. No. You're being right. You're saying what's right. And there's more and more and more of us in this country, in Europe, in the world, actually accepting the fact that, you know what, saying what's right doing what's right and campaigning for what's right is actually not only a great thing, a noble thing, but you can win. It's great. What a feeling. And as much as I'm not here to gloat, <laughs> and I never would, 
but doesn't it sometimes fill your heart with joy to see people like Hillary Clinton tasting what it's like to see you <laughs> I woke up that morning, I thought, I am looking forward to doing some press and media today. <laughs> I can't wait. I didn't sleep for two days after we won the referendum. I thought, anyone else want to talk to me? Come on, I'll, I'll talk to you. It's great times, and we've got more ahead of us. Because as been said earlier by Paul, we're at our best when we get radical, when we believe in ourselves, when we take on a big challenge. And now we've got some wins. And now we can see that it's doable. And now our opponents are literally terrified of the next test of democracy. So much so, they're actually trying to stop democracy taking place. They're so scared. Now is our time. We can really push on. So let's really start to believe in it. Let's say the things we believe in. Let's campaign for the things we believe in. Let's go forward with new excitement. And when people say to you, well, what's the point of it all? You won your key element with the referendum. All the things that get spoken about at conferences like this should be in mind. But there's one particular thing that always, always gets in my mind. And that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, along with so many other people here. I will be in Sedgley, in Dudley, where I'm a councillor, and I'll be laying a wreath. And it will be there on behalf, not just of our local party, but on behalf of me, my family, my neighbours, thinking about people who actually really are brave, who really have made sacrifices, who really have, over the years, made it possible for us to be able to do the things we do. And when you think about that and the enormity of it, because it's a time of year, folks, when I must admit, whilst I'm honoured that I'm asked to lay a wreath, and I've done it in Birmingham and across the West Midlands where I represent, I never feel adequate. I always feel that it's such an honour to be in the presence of families of veterans, veterans themselves, people who've really made sacrifices for our country. And when you do that, and then afterwards, you take the time, as I, I do, I have to sort of sit alone for a little while after that, just to take it all in. And you think, well, why are we doing what we do? We're doing what we do to make those sacrifices worthwhile. Those people, who we all have family members, we all know people who've been involved in some way making great sacrifice for our country. They've done it so that all of us right, left, UKIP, Labour, Tory, whoever, have the right to express ourselves and have the right to freedom and to really go out there and make a difference in our society, to live as we wish, worship as we wish, or not at all, live free from over-powerful state. Those sacrifices were made. All that's required of us is to go out there and live the life that they made the sacrifices to give us. And when people say to you, why are you involved in politics? You don't even need to throw that one back. Just sit there quietly and think about that. You're living the life that our heroes made sacrifices to give you. And that makes everything we do fantastically worthwhile and an honor to be involved in. now for me to say thank you so much for allowing me to come here and speak to you today. Uh, I've met a few of you at the bar, normal UK thing, uh, managed to have a chat while we've been here. I apologise for being late for my original slot, causing some of our classic English weather. I think I had about 15 different kinds of weather on the way up here. It was, a, it was really fascinating. Uh, so thank you all so much for this opportunity. I wish you all well. Uh, at whatever capacity I always remain involved in the party at, you know if you need any help, support, an MEP to come and go on a march with you against HS2 as I did recently up here, or come and speak to a branch, or just help. 
well, you know that there's a guy in the West Midlands who will always <coughs> think of this area as a second home and a place where I've got real friends. Thank you all.